So here's a kooky little thing I wanted to talk about with regards to Lightwave and FBX. First of all, notice that we're back in version 9.6 here. That's because this issue applies to both versions, Lightwave 9.6 and 10. It's exactly the same. And the issue is waiting. Now, many will have noticed that when we're in motion build, we're all animeeple with our meshes. We get these really kooky deforms going on. As we can see here, everything's really kind of a mess. And we haven't worried about it too much up until now, because, of course, the main thrust of these guides has been getting the actual bone animation data back and forth between the two packages. And that's fine in LW because of course as we can see in Lightwave our deforms behave, you know, more normally here. We're not getting these crazy deformations like we're seeing in Motion Builder. I admit the deforms are far from perfect because this character hasn't got any hold bones in him and he's not particularly carefully weighted. But still, we're getting a very, very different result to what we see outside of Lightwave. And here is the reason why. In Lightwave, I've just got these joints set up to use, you know, broad separator maps, which is a very common way of weighting your characters in Lightwave. See that all of the arm joints here are just using arms, all of the spine joints here are just using body, all of the leg joints are just using the leg left, leg right, etc. And that all works fine whilst we're in Lightwave. However, other packages don't work in this same way, and they require explicit weights to be set per bone. Now, the Lightwave FBX exporter knows this and it understands this. The result is that when we export out a character who has been weighted in this fashion, the FBX exporter will automatically weight our character with explicit weights. If we just export to FBX and then come and re-import straight away without having gone to Motion Build or anything else in between, we can see now that the weight names are different. We have left shoulder here, we have left arm, left arm roll, left forearm, and so on. Now this should work fine, but you'll notice that when we try to move things here, we're getting some really bad deformation occurring. Like here at the elbow, half of the upper arm is going with it, and here when we move the knee, we can see that the thigh is deforming, and also the opposing leg is being pulled along. And this is interesting because it looks kind of similar to what we're seeing over here in Motion Builder. If we pop open this mesh in Modeler and we look at his weight maps, we can easily see why this is happening. It's because the weights have been applied in the wrong places. The left arm weight map should be here, around the left arm bone. The left arm roll weight should be on this part of the mesh surrounding this bone, the left forearm weight map should be there surrounding this bone and so on. But that isn't what we've got. We've got the left arm weight map in the shoulder area, the left arm roll in the upper arm, the left forearm in the lower part of the upper arm, and so on and so forth. Our weights are one space back. This is because of the way that joints in Lightwave behave. With Lightwave joints, this bone portion or deformer portion of the joints is actually associated to the joint or pivot point part that exists hierarchically below it. So, so this deformer is part of this pivot. This deformer is part of this pivot, and so on and so forth. This is opposite to the way that Lightwave Z bones work, where you have a pivot followed by a deformer and both of those are associated to one another. Lightwave's Valkyrie exporter does not recognize this different behavior between bones and joints. Were this a Lightwave Z bone rig, then Valkyrie would have exported the weights correctly, but because it's a joints-based one, it hasn't. And so when it has looked at the left arm pivot point, it has applied the weight map automatically based on the area of mesh covered by the left arm deformer, which of course is here. If we select this deformer, we can see it's still called left arm. And that's where the problem has come from. Fortunately though, we do not have to stick with the automatic method of creating these weights. We can do it manually if getting correct deformation, or at least somewhere near correct deformation, is going to be important once we're in Motion Builder or Animeeple or similar. Here, quite simply, is how we do it. We have exactly our same setup, but in Modeler, we manually take the mesh and apply the weights to the places where they should be. So now here is our left arm, here is our left arm roll, our left forearm, left forearm roll, and so on and so forth. Once we have the joint rig in our character in layout, 
we take these deformers and we make sure that they are associated with the correct weight map, such as the left arm, left arm roll, left forearm, and so on. And then for all joints, we turn on use weight map only and weight normalization. Do note that for this to work correctly, the names you give the weight maps must match exactly, case sensitively, with the names of the joints. Of course, what you will have is you will have an offset. So this deformer is named left forearm roll, because remember, it belongs to this joint pivot, but it is associated to the left forearm weight map. That's fine. The weight map doesn't have to match the name of the joint deformer it is applied to, but it does have to match the name of a joint deformer that exists within the rig. In other words, you have to have the same collection of names. As long as all of that is done, and if you download the rig that is available on my site, it is already set up this way, so as you can examine it for yourself, then when we use the built-in Valkyrie FBX exporter, our rig will now export weighted correctly and come into Motion Builder or Animeeple with explicit weights correctly applied giving us good old-fashioned regular deformation in that scene. You'll notice here the eyes have been left behind for the simple reason that I did not include them in the head weight map and also the joints rig that I've used doesn't have eye joints, which Motion Builder does support, of course, although it's rare that you get eye motion capture. And coming back into Lightwave, you can either use the explicitly weighted version of the rig to apply your motions to, or of course you can have your weight set up in any which way you desire in Lightwave using Lightwave's native skinning methods, which of course does not require the explicit weights, because in that case all you are doing is merging back the bone motions by the merge motion envelopes. So there we have it. That is the weights issue as far as exchanging to FBX with Lightwave goes. I hope that clears a lot of things up in that respect.